Julia. Why is this mother running from my questions? Jason Matero with Crime Watch Daily. What does she have to hide? Why won't you cooperate with the investigation, Julia? Shouldn't she want to help in any way possible to find her missing son? Come on, Julia. And maybe the most pressing question, why is she calling the cops on me when the cops are dying to talk to her? You call the cops? But yet you don't want to cooperate with the police? It all starts with a loving two-year-old. He was uh, like a boy boy. Loved to jump on me when he was older. And his dad, Solomon, says it's his big brown eyes that can melt any heart. He was just, just, just pure love. But what happened to Sky Metawala on a chilly November day in Washington state is now a mystery that has investigators scratching their heads and has everyone else pointing fingers. Our community wants justice if something really happened to Sky. Sky's father, born in Pakistan, met his wife, Julia Buryakova, out of all places, a gas station. What attracted you to Julia? Her, her looks, of course. She's, she's beyond beautiful. She was very giving. She also was very supportive. The two quickly married and had a daughter named Miley. But Solomon started to notice some strange things about his new wife. She would obsessively clean the house three to four hours a day, seven days a week. Okay, this is this, this cannot cannot be normal. But that I I didn't really understand that until you know now. And as a mother, Solomon says Julia was really starting to struggle. Only thing Julia had to do was get up in the morning, get Miley dressed, and take her to daycare, and that's it, you know? But she couldn't do it. After Skye was born, Solomon knew his wife needed help, especially after he heard these chilling words from his young daughter. Miley started to say, I want to kill myself, because Julia was saying it so much when she was around Miley. Then, according to court documents, Solomon received a terrifying text from his wife that said in part, quote, I cannot live another day. I am dead on the inside anyway and have been dead for a long time. Julia was immediately committed to a hospital. Months later, after changing medication, she seemed to be turning things around. Life was good. Life was good. Life just got way good. <laughs> but that didn't last long. Julia's tortured ritual of cleaning the house got even worse. Now she was up to six hours a day. Solomon says he had no other choice but to divorce Julia and take custody of the kids. Julia and her husband were in the middle of a bitter custody battle. David Rose, host of Washington's Most Wanted, covered every brutal blow. Both of them had protection orders against each other, and the kids were caught right in the middle of this. Julia told the court that Solomon was not telling the truth about her mental illness and obsessive cleaning, and then she lobbed some very ugly accusations toward him. After the separation, Julia said that you had abused the children. When she told me that, I go, what are you talking about? Most disturbing of all, she even claimed Solomon sexually abused his daughter. Why would she say that? A CPS investigation found that claim to be unfounded, and Solomon vehemently denies any and all abuse allegations. He even took a lie detector test and passed. Still, the judge awarded full custody to his wife. What was that like to have your kids taken from you? I mean, you just killed my whole family. Because of the nature of the allegations, Solomon would go a full year without seeing Skye or Miley. Then Julia finally gives in and sets up a time. I was gonna see them that Wednesday. Sadly, that reunion would never happen. His mom said that Sky was sick that morning, so she was going to take him to the doctor in Bellevue. On the way to the doctor, Julia claims that the vehicle had some kind of car trouble. Julia tells police she grabs her four-year-old daughter, Miley, and walks a mile to the nearest gas station for help. But what about two-year-old Sky? Well, the strange thing is, she left that little boy in the car seat in the back by himself. She goes to the gas station. She doesn't get gas. She calls a friend to come get her. They go back to the car and Sky is gone. Lieutenant Dave DeVore is one of the lead detectives in Sky's disappearance. The child was reportedly sick, right? Exactly. Does that make sense to you? 
No, it does not. Something Bellevue Chief of Police Steve Milet has a hard time understanding as well. You're a father. If your child isn't feeling well, do you just leave him abandoned on the side of the road and then walk to a gas station? It's a great question. What's going through your mind when the police officers say that Sky has gone missing? I think uh, you're in a shock, so your, your, your brain doesn't think. Bellevue police would launch a massive search for Sky, but it didn't take long for investigators to find cracks in Julia's story. We started recognizing that there was some inconsistencies. Ms. Barracover had reported that the vehicle had mechanical problems, turned out to be not true. Um, it had plenty of gas in the tank. So there was gas still in the car and nothing mechanically wrong with it? Correct. That's exactly the opposite of what Julia said? Correct. So how would Julia explain that? Well, investigators would never get a chance to ask her. She was brought down to the station where we were gonna do some follow-up discussions. Her attorney came in and that was the end of our contact with her. A little boy missing, a mother not talking, a father desperately searching for answers. Do you believe her? Hell no. What part of her story doesn't ring true? All of it. Coming up, what really happened to little Sky? There are a lot of people in this community that believe that Sky was never in that car in the first place. And I go knocking on the door of the one person who holds the key to this mystery, Julia Buryakova. Why won't you cooperate with the investigation, Julia? My son is, is not here, and I don't know where he is. 